Hey, what's going on people? Hope you guys are doing good. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Galaxy S22 Ultra. I'm super pumped and excited about this phone and we're gonna go over the first things that you should do as soon as you get your brand new S22 Ultra. Let's do this. The very first thing I recommend doing is picking up a case and a screen protector. I learned my lesson with the S20 Ultra. I have a ton of scratches on that phone and even the backside has small little scratches. They're not big, but they're like micro scratches. So I recommend picking up a case. The one that I'm using is from Spigen. This is the Air case, I believe it is, or the Spigen Air, Spigen Thin, Ultra Thin. One hour later. It's called the Thin Fit. I just looked it up. I'm terrible at my job. I'm so sorry you have to deal with me. But I love this case because it makes the backside really flush. It still has that matte black design. It's really thin, but it still provides enough drop protection for me. And it does have a slight lip on the front, so you're gonna get some lay on the table screen protection. I'll throw it down in the description so that way you can check it out. And the screen protector that I'm using is from Whitestone Dome. They are expensive, I know that, but it is worth it. It's the best screen protector for curved edges and it fits the S22 Ultra like a boss. The oleophobic coating is great and it doesn't interfere with functionality whatsoever. Definitely consider picking up both of these. You can get whatever case you want, but definitely get a case. Two things I recommend doing after you install your screen protector is going back in and re-registering your fingerprint just in case the screen protector interferes with the original scan. No biggie. The second thing I recommend doing is going in and increasing your touchscreen sensitivity. That way you avoid any complications that might occur. I'm not saying that they will occur, but just in case. If you want to increase the touchscreen sensitivity, you're gonna go into your settings. You're gonna go under display, scroll all the way down until you see touch sensitivity and make sure that's toggled on and that's it. One thing I do every single time I get a new Galaxy device is customize it. Let me show you some ways that you can customize your phone like I do in order to make it a little bit more personal. So the first thing I like to do is increase the amount of icons that are being displayed on my home screen as well as my app drawer. By default, Samsung allows four icons to be displayed, but you can go into your settings and display five like I have here. To do that, just touch and hold on the screen, go into your settings, tap on home screen grid, and then adjust it to the layout that you want. Like I said, by default, four by five is selected, but I like five by five, but you can go all the way up to five by six if, if you choose to do so. Now to do the app screen, all you have to do is select app screen grid, and once again, change it from four by five to whatever layout you want. I prefer five by five, like I said, and that's it. It just lets you take advantage of the additional screen real estate a little bit more. Another thing I like to do is organize and customize my quick toggles. So by default, you have quite a few to choose from, but if you tap on the plus icon over on the last page, you have additional ones that you can add down here, like wireless power share and extra dim. Additionally, you have camera and microphone access, NFC, music share, and a ton more. To add them to your quick toggles menu, just grab them and drag them down and that's it. And if you wanna organize your icon layout, just grab the icon that you want and you can move it around to whatever position you want. I like to put my most used ones on the front page followed by my least used on the second page. Once you're done, just tap done and that's it. One of the best ways to customize your phone is applying a dope wallpaper. Like I have this Black Adam one going on right here and it just looks awesome. Typically I use the Dragon Ball Z one, but this one kind of caught my attention. Plus I'm pumped for the new movie. There's a few ways to download a wallpaper. I know you guys know how to do it, but if you want to just stick to Samsung wallpapers, you can go into the Galaxy theme store or go under wallpapers and themes and select more or explore more wallpapers. Samsung offers a ton to choose from, including animated wallpapers. So you just gotta take a look at their selection. But personally, my favorite wallpaper app is called HQ Walls. It's in beta still, so you get to try it out. But it has a lot of really cool anime, Marvel, DC, and just like comic book theme wallpapers to choose from. They're very vibrant. A lot of them support AMOLED display, so you're gonna save some battery due to that true black inside of the wallpaper. And yeah, I, I really like this wallpaper app. Plus it's free, and look, there's like a huge selection of wallpapers. This is where I get all of my Dragon Ball Z wallpapers, as well as this really cool Black Adam one. So I showed you my secret to getting really cool wallpapers like the Black Adam one here. Let me show you how I got my icons to match my wallpaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch and hold on my home screen, go under themes, it's gonna pull up the Galaxy Theme Store and then select icons and then find an icon pack that you think matches your wallpaper. 
So if I go under my recently purchased items, then go under icons, you can see the icon pack that I'm currently using is called EID Nightmare and just pay for it if it costs you anything. I think this one was 99 cents, but there's a lot of free icon packs that you can download. So make sure to check them out and find the one that best suits you and your wallpaper. Or you can just apply a, whole, a full theme, which will give you a lock screen, wallpaper, an icon pack, and sometimes an always on display. But it's a really cool way for you to customize the look of your phone. I really like what I have going on here. Let me know what you think. So I talked about my wallpaper. I talked about my icon pack. The icing on the cake is to apply a color palette. That way your system toggles like the dialer inside the phone app or the quick toggles, the color matches your wallpaper and your icon pack. To do that, just touch and hold on your lock screen, go under wallpaper and style, scroll down, select color palette, and then select the palette that you want, which is all being pulled from your wallpaper. So I selected that one, just tap apply, and boom, that's what you get. So I know I just mentioned the theme store and how you can download always on displays. Let's go ahead and go back in real quick and just tap on AODs. And from here, you can view different always on displays that you can download. Just like the icon packs, some you do have to pay for like 99 cents, but there's a lot of free ones that you can download and try out. Once you download it, go into your settings, go under lock screen, and then tap on always on display. And here you can customize it a little bit more so you can pick the clock style that you want, what information is being shown, so on and so forth. So this is the always on display that I'm using. I mean, it's kind of cool, I, I like it. It's just like a little face that looks around the lock screen. The last thing that you can do to make the look of your phone pop, and it's also gonna save you some battery life, is to apply dark mode. So go into settings, go under display, and then select dark. Now your system settings are gonna be AMOLED black, and it's going to look nice, punchy, and contrasty. I really like it. And that's how you can save a little bit of battery and just enhance the look of your phone to match your theme, wallpaper, and whatever else you have going on. To go one step further with dark mode, you can touch and hold on your home screen, then go under wallpaper and style, scroll down, and then select apply dark mode to wallpaper, which is going to dim out your wallpaper a little bit. So this is without dark mode applied. You can see it's bright. And then if I apply dark mode to my wallpaper, you can see it really dims it out. S Pen. The Galaxy S22 Ultra features a Quad HD Plus dynamic two times AMOLED display. That's a lot of jargon, but what you need to know is out of the box, this is in full HD Plus. So you're not even getting the full resolution capabilities of the phone. If you don't know how to change that, let me show you. If you want to put the display in Quad HD Plus, go ahead and go into your settings, go under display, scroll down until you see screen resolution, tap that and then enable W Quad HD Plus, select apply, and boom. Now you're getting the most out of this beautiful display. So while we're talking about the display, I do have a few more tips and tricks for you. The first of which is if you're editing photos or videos and you want your screen to be as accurate as possible, you're gonna wanna switch it from vivid to natural. Now vivid is great to look at, it's nice, punchy, tons of saturation, lots of contrast, but it's not that accurate. Natural is gonna give you very realistic colors as well as skin tones, so it's important when editing. Let me show you how to switch it up. So if you wanna switch it up, you're gonna go into your settings, go under display, go down until you see screen mode, and then just change it from vivid to natural. If you have vivid selected, you could adjust the white balance if you want to, or go into advanced settings and really dial in the RGB, but honestly, natural is gonna give you the most natural looking colors, and that's the mode that I prefer just because I want realistic skin tones, colors, and things like that because I do a lot of editing on my device for social media. Look at that car. The car is pretty cool. The Galaxy S21 Ultra did feature an adaptive display, but it can only go down to 10 hertz. So even though it did save some battery life, it's not as good as the S22 Ultra, which can go down to one hertz. But you do have to push it into the adaptive mode. Let me show you how to do that. By default, adaptive should be selected, but in case it's not, go under your settings, go under display, select motion smoothness, and then turn on adaptive. This is gonna give you the refresh rate from one hertz all the way to 120. So that way you can get smooth gaming at 120 hertz. And then you're also gonna save some battery whenever you're on a display that doesn't need um, that high of hertz and it can go all the way down to one hertz. 
Of course, if you leave it on standard 60 hertz, it's gonna give you the best battery life, but still adaptive is really good. And it's not going to affect battery life too much because of the adaptive capabilities going all the way down to one hertz. And it's just a lot smoother of an experience, if you ask me. I do plan on doing a what's on my phone video for the S22 Ultra because this is probably gonna be one of my go-to devices this year. But one widget that I use in every single video and practically on all of my Android phones is the at a glance widget. It comes pre-installed on almost all Android phones. So a lot of people ask me about it. Let me show you how to access it and how you can use it. So this is the at a glance widget. It's really cool. It gives you updates throughout the day, whether it's events, the weather, or just random messages like good evening or have a good day. If you tap on it, you can pull up your calendar or your email to access it. Press and hold on the lock screen, go under widgets, go under Google and it's right there. So you can just add it to your home screen that way. Like I said, I am gonna do a what's on my phone video for this phone. So I might switch it up and add some third party widgets in there, but this is my go-to and favorite Android widget like of all time. One of my favorite reasons to use Galaxy devices is Samsung Pay. And even though they got rid of MST support, NFC support has been adopted everywhere and it's just as useful as Apple Pay, except you actually get rewards back when you use Samsung Pay, which makes it way more useful in my personal opinion. Let me show you how to set it up and some other things that you can do with it. To set up Samsung Pay, you can just go into the Samsung Pay app and then you can add your debit or credit card information here. You can add gift certificates and you can also add membership cards like Starbucks and things like that. And then you can also add your vaccine record right here. So if you live in a state that requires you to have a COVID-19 vaccine passport, you can add that information right there. And then to access everything on the fly, just swipe up from your home screen and there you go. It's really easy, super useful. But what I really like about it is if you go into the bottom of the Samsung Pay app right here, you can earn cashback rewards from various stores, which gives you a, like a larger percentage of money back. And then that money can go to your Samsung rewards card. So you can spend it in various places, or you can add that to your Samsung theme store or Samsung Galaxy store purchases like apps, themes, uh, different wallpapers and things like that. It's just a really useful way to uh, shop. So it's kind of creepy and weird how like deserted and abandoned this part of downtown Orlando is, but I kind of like the vibe. It's like uh, peaceful and it's great to film in. I know that was probably some useless information and most of you don't care, but what you might care about is the S Pen support on the S22 Ultra. I know the S21 Ultra had S Pen support, but you had to have like a big clunky pen or buy the case that had the slot for the pen. It just wasn't as easy as just popping out the S Pen and I definitely suggest you play with it. It's a cool tool, I love it. I do have an S Pen tips and tricks video coming very soon. So if you don't see it at the card up top, be patient, it will be going live very soon. But let me give you a few uh, ways to use the S Pen right now that I think um, could be beneficial to you. Probably the most common way of using the S Pen is to create a note inside of Samsung Notes. So here you can doodle, you can create list, you can change uh, different fonts. You can also import PDFs into Samsung Notes and then sign documents. So this is probably the most common and useful way of using the S Pen, but there's a lot of other things that you can do. So if I pull up Air Command, you can see you have a bunch of other ways like Screen Write, Smart Select, Live Messages, AR Doodle, Translate, so on and so forth. You can also add different shortcuts to various apps inside of here. So if I get out of Samsung Notes, you can see you have a lot of other apps that you can add to Air Command like Bixby Vision, Magnify Glance, or other apps like Facebook, Expert Raw, so on and so forth. So this is just a really cool way or cool tool to use to get the most out of this phone. But like I said, I do have a dedicated S Pen video coming up and I'm sure you're not gonna wanna miss it. Another thing that I recommend that you try is use the S Pen in conjunction with the camera app to create really cool videos for social media or YouTube. And you can do this in conjunction with the auto frame feature, which is right here. It's like a little box, just toggle that on. And you can see I'm on the rear camera right now. So if I walk over with the S Pen, it should have me in frame and then I can trigger the recording by tapping the S Pen button 
and now it's recording and I can walk around. It's going to keep me in frame. I can do like an instructional video, a tutorial or a vlog, whatever I want to do. It is in full HD only, but it's a really cool feature and something I definitely recommend that you try. Perfect for like social media videos for TikTok or Instagram. There's other things that you can do inside of the camera app using the S Pen and air actions like switch modes. So as you can see, I'm on more. I can go back to video go back to photo, I can switch to the front facing camera, go back to the rear facing camera. I'm gonna cover all this extensively in my S Pen video, but I just wanted to quickly go over this because it's a really useful tool outside of just writing with it. So you find some really weird things in like little alleyways in Orlando. It's, it's kind of cool, life is sweet. So let's talk about the Galaxy S22 Ultra real quick. It has a fantastic camera and it has a great pro mode. It works like a boss, but if you want even more out of this camera, you can download the Expert RAW app, which unlocks 16-bit RAW and it's awesome. I did a dedicated video on it, so check the card at the top, but let me show you how to download it and then how you can edit those photos. So the Expert RAW app was technically designed for the S22 Ultra, but it released a little bit early and you could use it on the S21 Ultra. To download it, go into the Galaxy Store and then do a search for Expert RAW. You'll see it pop up, download it. I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. You can see it's very familiar. It works just like the pro mode in the stock camera app. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick picture like so. And it's gonna capture that, that picture in 16-bit RAW. So you have a lot of information to edit. Now I'm gonna go into Snapseed like so. And then I'm gonna pull up the photo that we just took right here and you'll see raw photo editing now available. Tap done, and I can adjust everything inside the photo right here in Snapseed. So I can raise the exposure like so, and then do all of my tweaking. And Snapseed is a free app, and the Expert Raw app is a free app. So you can really get the most out of this camera for free with those two apps, and I think that is really really cool. The Galaxy S21 Ultra had a fantastic 108 megapixel camera, but the S22 Ultra builds on that camera by adding two new features. We have Detail Enhancer, and you can now take 108 megapixel night mode shots. Let me show you. First, let's start with Detail Enhancer. You'll see like a little circle with a bunch of dots on the bottom right. Just toggle that on, and now Detail Enhancer is turned on. Here's an example of a shot with Detail Enhancer turned off versus turned on, and then we'll punch in and you can see even more detail. I think that's awesome. Next up, if I toggle off Detail Enhancer and then cover the camera to make it really dark, like so, you'll see a moon pop up, which is enabling night mode, and you could take a look at the top I'm still using 108 megapixels, which is amazing. So now you can take night mode 108 megapixel shots, and that is super useful for capturing all that detail and if you wanna do some cropping. To give you an example, here are two night mode shots. One is 108 megapixels and the other is not. If I do a little bit of cropping, you can see there's a lot more detail in the 108 megapixel shot. Another new feature on the S22 Ultra is the ability to remove shadows and reflections. It needs a little bit of work, it's not perfect, but it's still pretty cool and something that you should definitely try. Let me show you. In order to access the shadows and reflections eraser, you're gonna go into your gallery, find a photo you wanna edit. I have one right here where I want to remove the shadows. Tap on the pencil icon to pull up the editor. Tap on the three little dots in the bottom right corner. Go under labs and make sure shadow eraser and reflection eraser are toggled on. If those are toggled on, go back into the three little dot menu, tap on object eraser, and then select erase shadows, and boom, look at that. It works so good. It removed all of the shadows that I wanted removed. Now let me give you an example of the reflections eraser. So I'm gonna tap done to save the photo. Tap save. Now I'm gonna go back and find a photo where I want to remove the reflections. So we'll go back, go under camera. I have an image right here. Tap on the pencil icon to pull up the editor. Three little dots, go under object eraser and then tap on Erase Reflections. And there you go. It didn't do the best job, but I think with a little bit of fine tuning and tweaking, this could get really good. And it's just fun to see this on a phone. Tap Done to save the image, and there you go. Since the S22 Ultra borrows the style of the Note 20 Ultra, it's a fantastic phone to get things done on. This means it's great for productivity work and running apps side by side and split screen. Unfortunately, not all apps support this mode, but there is a way to go in and force all apps into split screen, and it works really good. So let me show you how to do that. 
For this example, I'm going to use Instagram. Unfortunately, Instagram does not support split screen. So if I try to put it in split screen, you can see there's no option. So I'm gonna go into the settings. Then I'm gonna go under advanced features. Then I'm gonna go under labs and then toggle on multi-window for all apps. Now, when I go back and then try to put Instagram into split screen view, you can see open in split screen view is an option. So I can do that and then I can follow that up with Twitter. And now I have my Instagram up top and Twitter on the bottom. But you can see it's not taking up the full width of the display. So if I want that to happen, I can go back into the lab section in my settings and then toggle on full screen and split screen view. Now, if I go back to my Twitter and Instagram, you can see now it's taking up the full width of the display, which looks a lot cleaner and there's minimal distractions. I really like that. The Galaxy S22 Ultra is a pretty large phone, so it can be tedious to use with one hand. Luckily, Samsung has a really good one-handed mode, but you do have to enable it. So let me show you how to do that. In order to enable the one-handed mode, we're gonna go into the settings, then go under advanced features, then tap on one-handed mode and toggle that on. If you're using the gesture-based navigation like I am, you're going to swipe in the center of the screen and swipe downward on the bottom edge, like so. And if you're using the button navigation, well, you have it a little bit easier because you can just use the triple tap of the home button. So that's how you can turn on the one-handed mode and it works for any screen. So I'm on the home screen here. If I just swipe down, you can see it minimizes the screen and you can adjust the size of the one-handed window like so. And it makes using the phone much, much easier. The S22 Ultra has a beautiful, bright, vivid display. And if you're watching HDR content, which it does support, you're gonna want to enable a specific feature to really enhance the brightness of this panel. Let me show you where it's at. To improve the brightness of video playback, you're gonna go into your settings, then go under advanced features, then scroll down until you see video brightness. Tap on that. And by default, normal is enabled, which will play videos using your phone's normal brightness and color settings. Selecting bright will temporarily increase the screen brightness and make colors look more vibrant when you watch videos. And this means that it's going to give you the most out of this HDR panel. So this is what I like to enable, but it will consume more battery life, just to throw that out there. And down here are these supported apps, so you can toggle them on and off, depending if you want some to use this setting and some not to use this setting. The fingerprint scanner on the S22 Ultra is really good, but you can also use your face to unlock your phone. Let me show you what I mean. So I just turned to the lock screen. You can see it's not recognizing my face because I have my sunglasses and hat on. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those, like so. And boom, look. Now it's going to let me into my phone. Do it one more time. Go to the lock screen. You can see it recognized me. Now if I put my sunglasses back on and then try to do it, it recognized me. Throw my hat on and do it. It does not recognize me and it will not let me in. So it works pretty well. If you want to register your face, you're going to go into your settings, then go under biometrics and security, and then tap on face recognition and you'll be able to register your face once you put in your pen. And that's how you do it. The last tip or trick I have for you is great for the parents out there that have kids that use their phone, whether it's for games, or if you want to let them color using the S Pen, this is a way that you can do it without them getting into your phone, deleting stuff, or accessing things they don't need to access. This feature isn't new, but it's really useful, and a lot of people have forgot about it. It's called Pen Windows. So we're gonna go into the settings. We're gonna go under biometrics and security. We're gonna go all the way down and then go under other security settings. Scroll down until you see pin windows and toggle that on. Now, say I was going to let a child use the S Pen and the built-in coloring book, like so. I could start coloring and then go into my background app switcher, select the coloring book, and then do pin this app. Tap OK. So now they can color, do whatever it is they want to do, and they cannot leave this app. No matter what they do, they have to stay on this app because of pin windows. Like I said, super useful for all the parents out there that have young children and they want to allow them to color using the S Pen, they can do so and you don't have to worry about them messing up your phone and getting into things they don't need to get into. So there you go. That was 
God, I don't even know how many tips and tricks for you for the S22 Ultra. It was plenty, I do know that. I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the little tour around Orlando. If you did enjoy the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this and stay tuned for the S Pen tips and tricks and of course, the camera tips and tricks. Those two videos are heavily requested and I know you're going to love them. Other than that, I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.